So, should the government be paying for the arts? Should taxpayer money be spent uh, to fund the arts using things like the National Endowment for the Arts? Um, you guys know I'm an artist. I made my bread as a musician for a lot of years. Um, I write books. You can uh, get them down below. Um, what do I think? Well, I would say, should we do it? Absolutely, positively, we should not do it. The National Endowment for the Arts should be wiped clean off the record. We should get rid of it. It is uh, terrible, and I would like to explain my position, and I'll start with the moral arguments, and I'll give you moral arguments from a bunch of different points on the political spectrum um, that maybe will appeal to you, but it is immoral to take money from one person and give it to another person that that first person actively does not want that money to be given to. And um, I'll just give you one really good anecdote, um, which is which is what's collo uh, colloquially known as Piss Christ, which was actually called, I think, Immersion. It was a photograph of a plastic crucifix immersed in a bottle of urine and taken a photograph of, and it received a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts, I think five or 10 grand back in the late 80s. Um, now, th besides this being n art with quotes, you know, um, this is something that is actively offensive to a lot of people. So they would not want their money to be spent to promote something that they actively consider sacrilegious, right? Christianity, rather popular religion in the United States. Um, you would think that promoting art that uh, seems to desecrate uh, some very important symbol of that religion would be rather frowned upon, just as like uh, you would object to the National Endowment for the Arts uh, funding somebody burning, um, you know, burning a Koran or something as a piece of art. Um, that wouldn't really seem kosher, right? Um, so there's a really, really good anecdote, but let me give you all the um, all the little political positions that I think um, would apply to not just that example, but pretty much all of them. So if you're an anarchist, if you're way over on the libertarian anarchist side of things, um, then you're going to view taxation as theft because it's not voluntary, right? You're not choosing to give your money. Somebody's taking your money by force and giving it to somebody else that you didn't agree to have that money given to. So the, the methods involved are inherently immoral. And it doesn't matter if you're giving the money to another person and it benefits them somehow or provides even benefit to society, whatever that is. Um, it would be immoral simply because taxation is immoral. If you flip over to the minarchist side, the minarchist position, that's like small government libertarians, um, you do the things through you do things through government which can't be easily organized through the free market, easily or efficiently organized through the free market. So an example would be like your little neighborhood roads. You know, you you kind of collectively fund those because you can't be charging people tolls for like driving out of their driveway and driving two feet over to a neighbor or something like that. Um, so you do you organize that through government. You organize things like national defense that are a little bit more difficult to do privately. Um, you organize all these things through government because it's more efficient to do so. It's more effective to do so. Or the, the free market doesn't really deliver this product well. Well, does the free market deliver art well the answer is hell yeah it does uh, the free market is excellent at delivering art to people and delivering entertainment to people um, you're watching YouTube on uh, the free market of YouTube uh, you're watching me on the free market of YouTube of uh, a free company a, um, a non-governmental entity um, and uh, your life is full of art. You probably own a bunch of CDs. You probably have DVDs all over the place and Blu-rays. Uh, you go down to the movie theater and you play. You pay eight or ten bucks and you get to see giant uh, fighting robots or whatever amazing thing that you happen to see that cost hundreds of millions of dollars to produce. And you get to watch it for eight or ten bucks. The free market is really good at delivering entertainment. Not just delivering entertainment for a very small price, like you know, giant two hundred million dollar fighting robots for $8, but also a huge variety, for a huge variety of tastes. Um, so if you wanted to listen to nothing but Baroque lute music all day, you could actually do that, you know? There's a lot of Baroque lute recordings out there. If you wanted to listen to nothing but Norwegian black metal, you could do that. There's a lot of Norwegian black metal recordings out there, and you can get them all for fairly a small amount of money considering how many times you can end up listening to them. Um, so the free market is really, really good at delivering art um, and delivering it at a very, very low cost to you. So no, um, you do not need the government to promote the arts. Um, even the arts that you think are you know, somehow culturally significant, 
turns out that people will pay to go see the LA Philharmonic. Who'd have thought that you would want to go see a professional orchestra um, with a bunch of players at the absolute absolute ceiling of skill level play classic uh, music that's beautiful? Yeah, people are willing to pay money for it. Um, people are willing to pay money for Baroque lute CDs that one guy just records by himself and are incredible, you know. Um, Robert Bartow is, you know, my favorite lute player, and I can just go listen to all of his all of his CDs, and it's amazing um, that you can do that. So you don't need it to promote high art either. The the free market does that. Um, so if you keep going, I don't know, further down the spectrum, and you get to like your, you know, your standard kind of centrist, um, what I would consider kind of a centrist, uh, you know, you're not anti-government you're not you're not for lots of government you think that um a government is appropriate when you get services that you pay for right so if you go to school like you pay for the school you get the service school right um that would include things like national health service right if you are paying for the national health service you receive the health care so um these are you know if you think it's legitimate to have things that the government provides for you and you pay for them um, regardless of how you kind of work that out across the spectrum of incomes, people are paying for a service and getting a service. Um, then that's, you know, okay. That's still not right because you are not receiving the service. You're not receiving the money from the NEA. Okay. So nobody, only very, very select politically connected people get that NEA money thrown at them. There's little grants to, to, to photograph, um, somebody's uh, sacred object in a bottle of urine. Um, that's what you uh, that's what you get. So most people have never really interacted with something that's gotten an NEA grant with a couple of exceptions. Um, you know, they've never really interacted with um, it, with any of these sort of politically connected little art exhibits. Um, so you're not benefiting. Most people are not benefiting from seeing the art, uh, especially if you don't live like in an urban center. You know, if you live out in the country like me, then it's just it's just you're never ever going to interact with anything uh, that receives um, an endowment grant. Uh, so you don't benefit from seeing the art that's paid for. And if you do see the art, chances are you're not going to like it uh, because by definition, um, the NEA funds art that people don't like. I mean, and the reason is if they liked it, they would buy it, right? Things that people like, people pay for. They find a way to pay for it. If they like a TV show, they pay for it by watching ads. Um, when it's like beamed into their house for free. Think about this for a second. The free market delivers free television and free YouTube. That's pretty awesome. So it's pretty good at delivering, it's pretty good at delivering art and entertainment. Um, so yeah, uh, if you consider it okay to pay for something and get a service, but you're not getting the service from the NEA and you're not getting the money from the NEA, you're getting nothing. Um, you're getting things that you know by definition are, are have no real value where people would actually buy them. So if, if, it, if it had value, people would buy it and there'd be no need for the grant. But because it doesn't have value, you have a need for the grant, but nobody wants it. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that it's like, there's never, a, there's never a case where like, you get a grant for a great piece of art that everyone likes because if everyone liked it, you wouldn't need the grant, right? Um, if you even go even like really kind of really far and you go all the way to like a socialist story, maybe even... Um, you know, you know, a, a com even a communist sort of uh, way of thinking. Uh, you wouldn't want the National Endowment for the Arts because um, if somebody has need and they're an artist, you give them what they need, right? Um, you don't, you don't give them ten grand to pay them for a piece of art. That's inherently like capitalistic that you get paid for some for some work that you've done in in specific values that are determined by someone else um it'd be more like okay the artist needs to eat you know we'll give him the money you know we'll give him the resources to eat and he can just produce his art right that would be more like a socialist thing this is a picking and choosing because not everyone gets this national endowment for the arts money only very select people get it and all the other artists just have to starve and put up with the fact that they are paying for some other artist to get money that's making art that they by definition do not want okay so that's what most people get it's not you know it's not even like socialist or anything like that um there's no workers owning means of production for art they're just paying random artists so it's it's not good on even on like the far you know the far collectivist versions of government it's not really justifiable to me at all um if you're a conservative of course 
um, conservatives um, like to talk often about culture, uh, but uh, the National Endowment for the Arts doesn't really promote the culture that conservatives like. So, of course, conservatives are not going to really approve of that. And for the most part, um, those cultural idioms which promote conservative values just do fine in the free market. Um, they just do fine without government support. People are willing to pay pay for the arts or not. Um, lastly, you know, just because you're giving someone money um, doesn't mean, or just because you're not giving someone money, like from the National Endowments for the Arts, doesn't mean that that person isn't going to produce art um, uh, because they feel that they need to. So if someone feels that they have something culturally significant to say or do, then they'll probably just do that whether or not you give them 10 grand for doing it. Um, and that's an important that's an important point is that if somebody feels in their heart that they have something important that would affect culture to do, they just do it. Um, artists don't really sit around and wait for like, oh, um, you know, uh, dear sweet uh, National Endowment for the Arts Gods, please bequeath me ten thousand um, dollars so that I may make art that will positively affect the world. Thank you, and they just they will go do it. And and I know that because I'm an artist. Um, and this goes to you know, let me. I could talk uh, before I talk about like the smattering of other arguments I've heard. I would say that um, endowments for the arts are really only useful um, from a purely like political perspective. You're you're trying to promote people that you like or who are, have a message that you like, and that message will inherently never contradict the existence of the National Endowment for the Arts. Right? It'll never contradict the existence of the government because you wouldn't fund something that is saying that you need to be defunded. So that would never happen. Um, only from like a really purely totalitarian perspective would you view picking and choosing the winners of art um, for cultural reasons or whatever reasons to be justified because you're trying to remake, you're trying to remake the mind by choosing what art people, people see and what, what people take in to remake them into a different kind of person um, to fulfill like, you know, the the ultimate vision of like a classless stateless society. Um, so let me get into like the smattering of other little arguments that I've heard millions of times. Keep in mind, I know lots of artists, I know lots of musicians, and for whatever reasons um, that they have, they are really, really um, opposed to cutting the NEA. And I, th I, I um, it, it's hard to ferret out exactly why they think this, uh, but I think it's that, you know, they're invested in the arts. And so the idea of cutting an endowment for the arts seems like it would affect them, even though it really wouldn't because they don't get national endowments for the arts money. So it would have no net effect on them um, whatsoever. But the first uh, little spattering argument is like, wouldn't it be nice to be able to make art without the evil of the profit motive polluting it? You could make art that would just affect people properly and you wouldn't have to worry about whether you would have to sell it at the end of the day. You could just make what you believed was important for people to know. Um, this is the biggest uh, like BS ever. Um, you know, I wrote this book in its entirety without receiving a dime up front. And I'm super, super thankful when people buy this book because that means that uh, they are seeing some potential value there and they would like to experience some good piece of art or good piece of entertainment. Um, that means a lot to me. But I didn't write it because I wanted to make money. I haven't really made a lot of money on this book. That's okay. I wrote it because I had a story to tell. And I think there's a lot of other writers on this channel that would probably agree with me. You write the art because you have the story to tell. It's in your heart. It's in your being. You got to get it out and you want to make you want to make it work. And of course, you want to sell it because you want people to read your story and experience what um, what moves you and what your passion is. But to say that it's entirely the profit motive or that the profit motive pollutes somehow the the like creation of art is is really dumb. Most of the time, you're creating the art upfront without being paid a dime and at a great expense to you. And it's not at, like you're investing in a company that you're hoping to make lots of money on the other end. You do it because you just really you really want that art to exist. Um, it's that's just a really really common perspective for artists. Very few artists um, that I know got into art to make money, and those that did quickly found that it was a different business than what they thought it was as far as making money goes. So uh, no, the profit motive, that's a that's a BS thing. People make art all the time without the profit motive. Um, I give away my art all the time. You're watching a free video. Um, you can listen to free music on the YouTube channel or on my SoundCloud. 
Um, you can read my books for free at dvspress.com. I give away a lot of content. Um, to say that I'm purely obsessed with the private motive, well, I would like to make money at it, um, but I think it's more important to me to give something to people. You know, I want people to experience what I have a passion for. That's what matters more to me. It's um, it's never like, oh, I'm only concerned for profit, you know, or things like that. Um, or that if you're concerned for profit, you're not going to make a good product. Obviously, if people are making something that's very profitable, lots of people approve of it enough to buy it, which means that they're making good art, right? And they're making art that's at least good to somebody. And I know that that's appeal to popularity, but people vote with their dollars all the time. So um, lots of people like Force Awakens. I didn't. It's okay. You don't have to like everything that I don't like, or you don't have to like everything I like and dislike the same things that I dislike. Um, this other idea is that if you cut the arts, the arts will go away. I explained this one, like um, saying that you want to cut government funding for the arts, you know, because it's immoral. That doesn't mean that you hate the arts or that you hate classical music or you hate painting or you hate people creating art um, that's um, just a non-argument the the arts will not die um, because before there was a national endowment for the art arts there was art <laughs> and there was art that people didn't like that was unpopular and people still put it out um, and long after the national endowment for the arts is history and uh, is dead and gone there will still be great art being made um, the fact is that it's not necessary and it's not effective for promoting good art. Um, this other one is this concept of high art that I've had um, plenty of arguments with 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 like music faculty years ago um, when they when they're like, oh, Germany funds arts the right way, you know, um, that they had this idea that you need to fund uh, what they would consider like art music, which is a term that I really hate. Um, because it implies that music that isn't art music isn't art, which is dumb. Like you're not going to go up to um, you're not going to go up to Metallica and be like, yeah, you know, I know that you worked for like years on this album, but it's not art. It's not art. You know, real art's opera, right? So you know, this isn't art. I know that you. you know, it's just you guys are just. I don't know. You you put some sound put some sound on a hard drive so whatever it's not art um so it's this uh, this elitist attitude that um opera is the art that deserves all preservation or classical music's the art that deserves all preservation um and meanwhile classical painting has just completely disappeared because um what the um what gets promoted in art schools and through the national endowment for the arts are things like piss christ you know dropping a, a crucifix into a bottle of urine that's what you get instead of the classic art you don't really get the classic high art um, because you you know people who make high art and they aren't necessarily politically connected um and the idea that somehow people would stop being an opera singer which they've trained to do because uh, they weren't receiving grant money and they would have to charge people for tickets is nonsense it costs a lot of money to go to the opera the opera can be profitable um, there's plenty of operas that operate fine without any kind of government subsidy or government money plenty of orchestras that operate just fine without um, involuntary um, government taxation so the idea that you need some sort of endowment to maintain culturally significant art is nonsense. It's elitist. Um, it's, uh, you know, there's no reason that you can't view something like uh, Straight Outta Compton as culturally significant because it was, it had a big impact. Uh, arguably had a bigger impact than a lot of other things that people consider high art. And um, this, um, this idea that if you don't want to fund the arts, uh, you don't like art. That's the other part. No, that's not the case. Um, we buy CDs all the time. Just because somebody doesn't want to fund it doesn't mean that they, they that they hate art. They can, if they like that art, they can of course go ahead and buy the art. And then the last um, one of the smattering arguments that I always get is like the Sesame Street argument, which is you know Sesame Street aired on PBS, and you know it's it started off with like government money, but now it's a pretty profitable thing. And they're like, well, lots of people love Sesame Street, and there'd be no Sesame Street if there was no PBS, and there'd be no PBS if we didn't have like a bunch of government money involved in it. Um, well, the, the problem with that argument is that if you're saying that, that there's benefit to doing something wrong, it doesn't make the wrong thing cease being wrong, uh, right? So it doesn't make um, the bad thing stop being bad because somebody benefited. Um, you know, when um, Bernie Madoff stole a bunch of money from people, he benefited. Benefit is not like the razor of morality at all. 
Um, if you steal a thousand dollars from somebody and give it to a thousand bums, you haven't done something moral. You've stolen a thousand dollars, um, probably from somebody who needed the thousand dollars. Um, so just because something good happens as a result of some sort of government action does not mean the government action is justified. And in most cases, like I said, if it is something of value, people will end up trading for it. People will end up having a demand for it. And Sesame Street's a great example. Sesame Street does not need government funding. It's quite profitable all on its own. It licenses all kinds of toys. It sells the little DVDs and VHSs. And um, it just doesn't, it doesn't need any kind of endowment money because people like it and it offers a service that people find valuable. So um, that's the, that's that's that one. Um, there's sort of a couple more that are just coming to mind. One is that the National for Endowment for the Arts is such a small amount of money compared to the general budget because the general budget is billions. It's like a trillion dollars, a trillion and a half dollars of of government budget and this one's just a paltry 500 million dollars or something it's it's nothing it's nothing well um 500 million dollars is still a lot of money and um if somebody steals a dollar out of your pocket it doesn't there is no like point at which theft stops becoming wrong because it's too small or it's too insignificant a thing right um if you steal 50 cents out of my pocket that was still my 50 cents it was wrong to steal it and if it's such a tiny amount of money you can beg for it say like sir can i have the 50 cents i'm starving i'd be like here's your 50 cents how fun right um so it, it, you could fund it through charity if it was such a small amount of money then you probably shouldn't need to steal people's tax money to do it you could just have people voluntarily give it to you um, so this is that, that last little one that somehow it's a small amount of money compared to the budget. Therefore, why are you, why are you so upset about it? Well, people are upset about it because even if it's a small amount of money, if you're making a Christian open up their wallet and you're taking the money out and you're going, here's, here's some money for that person who put the, the crucifix in the bottle of piss, you know, they're going to be upset about it. And I know that that's an anecdote, but, um, the fact that that happens, it <laughs> should be like quite you know, quite a good indicator of, of just what sort of things the uh, National Endowment for the Arts is capable of promoting. Um, and even with that example, you might have one more little one more little thing, which is that uh, it, it isn't unconstitutional with that piece of art. It's potentially unconstitutional because you could be promoting religion or inhibiting religion or things like that. Um, you could really, really cross the line with that separation of church and state. Um, and I think it probably has has many times. Um, and that will be a moral issue as well. So that's pretty much all I have to say about it. It is wrong. It is wrong for moral reasons. So it's uh, you shouldn't you should get rid of the National Endowment of the Arts because it's ineffective. Um, it's inefficient. And most importantly, it is wrong. It is morally wrong to be taking money from one person involuntarily and giving it to someone that they specifically don't want the money to go to. And you know that they specifically don't want their money to go to that person because if they did, they would buy that person's art. It's, it's that simple. So you guys have a great day. I hope um, I will hear from you soon. Uh, check out all the links down below for my books. You can buy Muramasa Blood Drinker over at Amazon in paperback or in um, ebook. You can buy Prophet of the God Seed. Uh, the album will be coming out this year at some point. Um, you can check out my new podcast with uh, Matt Wellman, Writers of the Dawn. It's linked down below. You can find it on iTunes or you can just check the um, the SoundCloud link or I'll probably put like an RSS link there too if you like your RSS feeds, which you can also put into iTunes and, and download your podcasts and listen to them. Um, we talk about writing on those podcasts uh, for the most part, so um, I'm really enjoying making them and I hope you will enjoy listening to them too. You guys have a great, great day.